Today I'm going to give you a brief video review of the SecureLynx Spider SLS 200. I'm going to show you how well it works, how to set it up, and how to configure it. Let's take a look. Okay, so here is the little puppy. It's a little size, not too bad. This is a single KVM switch, so one computer. So on the front, we have where your Ethernet plugs in. We have your monitor cable. And we have two USBs. One's for data, and one's for giving it power. Over here, we have some external power, if you want to use a, um, a micro USB. And we have a serial to Ethernet port. So to configure this thing, to go into the product, configure the IP address, the default gateway, and the subnet mask, you have to dig in your office and try to find a computer with the serial port. And then plug it in and configure all those settings from there. I'm not going to show you how to do that. It's pretty simple to do. Instructions on the website. I'm just going to show you how well this thing performs over the network and how you connect to it. So let's go ahead and connect this thing up. The first problem you're probably going to run into is the fact that this thing does occupy your one and only VGA port. So you plug the little guy in and you want to monitor him from upstairs or from the internet or wherever, but you still want to have an external monitor plugged into it. For that, you can buy this little adapter, which goes from one female to two males. So we can plug him in here, and this lets us pretty much mirror one image to two different sources. So right here, we're going to plug the KVM into one, and our VGA monitor into the other. You don't have to do this, but for what I want to use it for, I want to be able to have an actual mouse and keyboard plugged into this thing too. So now we'll just go ahead and give it some power. This thing does power over USB, so if the computer loses power, you're kind of screwed. Get in there, you little bastard. There we go. Now the way I have this configured, to go over to my network, I'm using Powerline over Ethernet, which allows me to plug one box in by my router and the other box wherever I want. So if the computer's over there, I take the box over there, if it's here, I bring it here, if it's upstairs, wherever. Find the nearest outlet next to the computer, plugged into the wall, I now have an Ethernet connection to that machine. So we're going to go ahead and plug this into the Ethernet port. There we go. And as you can see, all the lights are blinking. And that's about all it is to set it up. So now let's go to the computer side of stuff, the software. So before I started recording, I hooked it up via serial and set the IP address to 192.168.1.8. So before you get started, it's a good idea to see if you can even ping the IP address. Because if you can't, you might as well just stop there and do a little bit of troubleshooting. But if you can, then you know the computers can at least talk to each other, or can at least see the, the KVM. So we're going to go ahead and do a ping 192.168.1.8 and it's alive, it's alive, look at that, it's alive, so it can talk, that's good. So now we're just going to go ahead and close that. Now because of the web interface to get to the KVM, use Internet Explorer. So we're going to go ahead and open this up, http colon slash slash 192.168.1.8 and you're brought to a login box. The default login is sysadmin password. I changed it so it's not the default. And we're going to click login. And there is our KVM. So I'm going to hit record on the computer behind me. So we can just show you how fast the refresh is. So there's two things to realize here. Before I could even get the mouse to work, I mean, I could see the screen okay, but I couldn't get the mouse to work. To do that, you had to go into Interfaces, Keyboard and Mouse. Now, if you're in Windows, you want to put it to Windows 2000. You can leave it this way, but the mouse is always, like, they don't match. It's on the screen, but it's, like, five inches away from your original mouse. So, if you change it to Windows XP or Windows 2000, it matches perfectly. Although, if you have it on Windows 2000, it won't work at all um, on a BIOS level. So for that, you got to change it to this one. That's really the only trick, that's the only problem I really had with the entire thing. 
Um, from here, you can change the network settings and all that kind of stuff, um, video settings. But if we go back to just the KVM console, oops, it opens up Java. Let's see. This is the first time I've actually done it on this computer. And here is our computer. Woo. So what we can do from here, and you'll see behind me, as I go up and down, it's pretty damn responsive. So in that other machine, I'm going to go ahead and put in a memtest CD or any sort of bootable disk. And we're going to go ahead and tell it to boot off it. So it's in the drive now. And we're going to go ahead and just tell it to boot. And right now it's doing a mem test. So if you wanted to watch the mem test from upstairs or if you want to port forward, make a new port and port forward it from outside the house, you can monitor what a computer is doing on your repair desk. Say, huh, I'm spin writing a drive. Well, if I got to be home to fix the computer, it's only good if the spin write's finished. Is spin write done? You wouldn't know it otherwise because it's running outside windows. This way, you can still monitor it from outside windows. So because it's full keyboard and mouse, we can just hit escape. And now we're just going to go ahead and boot into Windows. So we can see the entire boot process. I've always wanted a KBM forever, and I must say it's not disappointing. But the one thing we have to do now, and I guess you can probably see it once we get to Windows how bad the mouse is going to be. Um, We'll actually let it continue into Windows so you can see how far apart the mouse is. But yeah, I did this because if I only have one computer to work on and is doing a three hour spin rate scan, I might just go upstairs and watch TV or something. But it might finish while I'm upstairs, and so I wanted a way to, to, to see spin rate scan and see the moment it completes so I can just come back down and go to, go to work. So. Let's go ahead and full screen it. Now you'll notice, see how far apart my mouse is? Sort of unusable. So now we're just going to get out of here, go back and set it to Windows 2000. I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And you'll notice how much better the mouse is. So we're going to go ahead and open Word. The computer's still booting up, so that's why the computer's a little bit slow. So if we just do a type in testing, one, two, three, it's just that easy. So that is my review of the uh, KVM. I don't have the name right in front of me. Hold on. That's my review of the SecureLink Spider SLS 200. I hope this helps. It retails for 350, but you can easily find it, like I found this one on eBay for 150 bucks. If you've ever been thinking about getting a KVM switch, this is great. You will not be disappointed. Anyway, this is Adam Botchin for a video review. Have fun.